This March 3rd video shows civilian vehicles being fired on while fleeing the occupied Ukrainian village of Motizhin. Located outside of Kyiv, between Motizhin and Yaznaharodka, a roughly four-mile stretch of road served as a crucial but perilous escape route from incoming Russian forces. Local police said 37 civilians died here between late February and the end of March. The Wall Street Journal analyzed videos, photos, messages posted to social media, and weapon debris. We interviewed multiple people in the village and reviewed phone calls between residents. We didn't account for all of the deaths, but we found evidence from a few key incidents that give a window into how a four-mile stretch of road became one of the most blatant examples in the war of Russian soldiers attacking civilians attempting to flee. One man who made it through the road in March, Yuri Supernenko, recalled the horror. Oh, there are three main routes in and out of Motizhin. During the first week of the war, the two roads to the north became the site of many civilian killings as they tried to flee Russian forces pushing south. Many Motizhin residents turned to a road running southeast toward the village of Yaznaharodka in hopes of getting to places free of Russian troops. But this southern route would become just as perilous throughout the month. The stretch of road closer to Yaznaharodka is where many civilians were attacked. On March 3rd, a caravan of three evacuating vehicles were fired on here. Weapons experts say that the two projectiles seen in these videos are likely mortar and appear from the left of the frame, indicating that they were likely shot from the northeast side of the road, just east of Motizhin, which a driver in one of these vehicles confirmed. In April, we found debris on the same stretch of road that experts say is from an 82mm or 120mm mortar because of the shape of the tail fin and the markings seen here. These types of mortars can be fired from roughly two to five miles away. We found evidence of heavy Russian military activity in that range throughout the month. In a March 5th recording shared with the Wall Street Journal, Yuri Supernenko, who was still in Motizhin at the time, called in a Russian firing location in this area to a member of the volunteer Ukrainian military. No, look, и дальше в поле метров 700. Видно, стоят установки, потому что вышли две ракеты. Just to the west of the firing location Supernenko reported, we can see Russian vehicles in a drone video from late March. In a forested area just north of the Russian vehicles, in early April, the Wall Street Journal saw more evidence of Russian troops. A mass grave and military badges from the 37th Guards Motor Rifle Brigade. Residents also said Russian troops fired on cars from positions close to the road. The Russian embassy in Washington, D.C. didn't respond to requests for comment. The Kremlin has said previously it is not targeting civilians. On March 7th, a message posted in a Motesian telegram group warned of a roadblock. That same day, a civilian named Oleg Moskalenko, who was traveling towards Motizhin, was taken captive at a checkpoint, according to his daughter. His car was left on the road. Rocks, likely used to block the road, are visible in videos filmed in the days that followed. Moskalenko's friends and family used the Find My Phone tool to track his phone. The last coordinates point to a line of trees along the road. Moskalenko's daughter said that he was questioned about being a member of the Ukrainian forces and beaten. He was eventually released by the Russians and is now recovering in a German hospital. We can still see Oleg's car on the road in a March 10th video filmed by evacuees. We also see another car abandoned nearby, suggesting more civilians were captured or fled. On March 16th, a news video shows a third car that's been abandoned, a damaged red station wagon with a white cloth tied to a side mirror and a sign in the windshield that reads children in Russian and Ukrainian. Near the vehicle, Ukrainian soldiers discover the dead body of a local man. 
Facebook messages reveal that a woman driving in the car was rescued and taken to the hospital with injuries. We were unable to determine whether she ultimately survived. What Yuri Supernenko describes in the March 17th video after his escape speaks to the lasting toll of Russian brutality on the road. Troops, they are already dead, killed in cars, in which they had to be silhouetted of children. My children all saw it. The oldest was a hysteric. She was sleeping at night. The young one was also sleeping. She was constantly crying. I don't want to tell you. 